Welcome to part 3 of the series on how web video streaming works. Now that you're familiar with the terminology from the first video and the basic mechanics from the second, let's continue with the final element which is the distribution. The final piece of the streaming puzzle is how to get these tiny video segments to the user in the fastest and most efficient way possible. This is where the CDN comes in. CDN stands for Content Distribution Network. It is just a collection of computers with storage which have the videos saved. They are sometimes referred to as points of presence, also known as POPs, and should not be confused with an edge network, which is quite different in the way it works. So let's go over how they actually work. Now, imagine the following scenario. We have a Netflix server in California, over here, and you want to watch some movies there, but imagine that you are based in London. And then you have a friend who you've recommended the series and also wants to watch them. Let's say they're based in Bulgaria. Now, both of you will need to download the content from the Netflix servers, which we are going to assume right now are located in California. Okay? Now, imagine that every person on the world who wanted to watch, let's say, The Crown, will actually have to go to the same server in California. Now, this creates obviously a bottleneck. Now, if you have as many connections coming in, this will easily become a bottleneck. All right? Now, what is the solution here? The idea will be to get these people connecting to different points so that you do not have one first of all, single point of failure, but also to reduce the distance. Because if I'm based in New York and I want to watch uh, again from Netflix, the distance that my internet connection has to travel is much shorter than if I'm based in Europe. So I will be downloading faster. So this might be an okay experience for many, but it doesn't necessarily translate well for places that do not have fast internet for example so you want to minimize the possible travel and improve the experience for the users so this is where cdn comes in what cdns actually are as i already mentioned just computers with storage that have copies of the videos so for example let's assume that you still have the netflix servers in california but i now have a cdn somewhere in spain or portugal and i'm gonna uh, identify them on the map with let's say a square and let's say I have some in Ireland and some in Bulgaria as well let's take again as an example some in Australia and you get the point now what happens is that now for example if I'm based in London and I want to stream the video I will actually not connect to the Netflix in California, I will actually connect to the endpoint that is in Ireland, for example. Now, the question you may have is like, okay, so that's straightforward, makes sense. But how does the point of presence in Ireland have the same contents as Netflix? So that's basically where the magic comes, right? Uh, Netflix would have copied these files over inside the CDN endpoints so that next time you reach it will actually know, hey, I actually have these contents in here. I don't have to go back to the uh, California servers to download them. You can just download them directly from me. Now, what happens is that if, let's say, you have the following instance, I want to watch a TV series that is actually not popular and it's not on the machine yet, it will actually realize, okay, I don't have this. I will go in and fetch it from the California server. I will save it on in the location that the CDN is based in. So next time anybody in this area who wants to watch the same series connects, they will all go to this endpoint and I already have it prefetched. Okay. So basically you replicate these video segments in all resolutions across multiple machines across the world. Now, the way they're kind of distributed is a terminology that's used by cloud providers right now. So what actually this boils down to is something called a region so you have a region 
and you then have availability zone. So a region can be something like US East representing the entire uh, US East Coast, so New York and so forth. And availability zone is essentially a slice of that region. So you can have uh, zone one, two, and three, which could be along different points of the US East Coast. So let's say uh, you want good connection for Europe that comes from east of US. You would heavily in invest in US East, for example. And then, because you want to diversify if one data center goes down, you will deploy to the three availability zones so that you have good redundancy when it comes to this region. Now, this is what the CDNs are essentially inside those availability zones. So you, you can have, let's say, one CDN in availability zone one, one in zone two, and so forth. All right. So now imagine these scattered across the entire world. This essentially is how you get efficient in distributing video. Now, this is the first element. The second one is predicting what to essentially save on these CDNs or the terminology that's used in computing called cache on these CDNs. For example, imagine that you have a very popular TV series, let's say The Crown. And Netflix knows the date that they will release this on. So let's say it's 1st of March. Great. Now, they know that the moment they release it, there will be a spike in download, bandwidth, and so forth. So they want to reduce the load on their servers as possible. So instead of triggering this uh, process where you fetch from CDN, the CDN doesn't have the data and then go to the Netflix server, this will again overload them because you will have all the CDNs across the world all at once fetching the data from the one place, which is the Netflix servers in California. So you end up with the same bottleneck just as a massive spike at once. So what they would do is essentially they would pre-save the crown on these CDNs in advance. So let's say they would actually save them on the last day of February, the day before 1st of March. And the moment they released, hey, start watching The Crown, you basically already have the contents in there. So they save their uh, California servers from being overloaded. So this is essentially being smart about having the data already there so, you so that you save even more time of the streaming element, which is the downloading bit and actually saving your infrastructure from kind of melting. Now, obviously the bandwidth benefits by reducing the distance you travel are good, but what we're missing here is essentially the middle point, because this is at the moment an oversimplification of how the connection works. What actually happens is you have three points, uh, something that is called first mile, something that is called middle, and then the last mile. So if we do the following, let's identify this trace route, for example. So I have the first mile here, then I have the middle one, and then I have the final. Now, the first one is essentially from the origin to the CDN. And this is from origin to the CDN, which is what we've discussed so far. The second piece is from the CDN to your internet service provider, your ISP. And then the final one is from the your internet service provider to your device, which is your computer or your mobile phone and so forth. Now, the distance here is that the hardest one is the first one. Okay, because it usually travels the longest distance. So this is the longest one, right? Then CDN to ISP is actually quite reliable. It's like enterprise level quality speed that you can get because many of those CDNs will be 
kind of smartly located very close to the internet service providers so that the distance they need to travel is actually quite short. And then from the internet service provider to you, it actually travels via cellular towers, either underground fiber, like any means of, that you would consider the internet basically. And that's, uh, that's all it is in a nutshell. That's, that's what happens. Right. So again, obviously this is a significant over simplification of the real world, how capacity allocation works and all these kind of elements in there. But in terms of just how we've kept this series so far on a kind of high level touch, how video streaming works and how the pipeline end to end actually looks like, I think we're going to wrap it here. Now, just as a kind of a tidbit to wrap up this video, some of the most CDN providers that you may hear about on the web are Cloudflare, Amazon's CloudFront, Akamai, Microsoft Azure CDN, Google Cloud CDN, and many others. Now, what we've discussed here with CDN does not apply only for videos. It applies also for regular images or any other kind of code for regular applications as well. So the same logic applies, but it is particularly important for video because of the scale of data that needs to be pushed. All right. And with that, we wrap up the series. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you want to have more kind of series like this. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time.